Matthew 21 12 Jesus went into the temple of God he's in Jerusalem and he's carried by the multitude into the city that the city doesn't even know what's going on don't even know who he is he enters the temple of God temple still there cast out all that sold and bought in the temple overthrew the tables and the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves now, this, this is this is a great thing what would Jesus do how come you got churches that will run to the law of Malachi you got to give 10 percent you got to give 10 percent and then when they have a missionary or you have evangelists well, you know, if you see the table in the back room, you can buy their CD, their books, and their MP3, you know, whatever kind of junk they have. What would Jesus do? He'd throw that table down. You know, we're talking about the temple here. You know what Jesus would do if it was the church today? He would trample down the pulpits and the podiums. I mean, they're not selling doves. They're not changing the money. But they're sure made a profit of the people of the Lord. Now the money changers here is, there's a swindling. And Proverbs speaks about you've got to have the proper weights. If you don't have the proper weights, it's an abomination. And what it is, what they're doing, they're not supposed to charge usury according to the law. So what you had was you had the temple uh, money. And you had the Roman money. Now, no Jew would honor money that had an image on it. So the temple money would have no face, no Herod, no Roman leader. So in order to go into the temples, you would exchange your Roman money for temple money. And evidently, somebody was getting a pick at it. Somebody was getting disadvantaged, which is a violation of law. Now, the doves, they are part of the offerings and there were people making extreme amount of money from part of the offerings and it's this nonsense it's draining the people dry taking advantage of them and this is what Jesus does he goes in there and, and one gospel will tell us that he made a cord of whips Took some ropes, made a whip, and he's just banging, smacking, kicking, roaring, and all the animals. Because they're, they're selling the animals, too. What would Jesus do? And if they made merchandise in the temple, what would you think Jesus would do with, with today's church, with the books, the CDs, the, uh, you don't have cassette tapes no more? I, I was in one church, wasn't a good church, I was in one church one time, and they told the, 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 the evangelist, your car's out in the parking lot, you sell your stuff there. You're not selling it here. So you run to the law with tithing, but the law says your first dough, your first crops, everything. I've known very little people who brought their tomatoes and potatoes into the church house. I don't think I would have seen a pastor who would receive one tenth of of your dogs that you know has a business of dogs. See, there's some churches out there, Baptist church, they use the Bible to their advantage. And we're halfway between the law and and grace. Because Jesus said the law and the prophets were unto John the Baptist. Well, John the Baptist is dead. What kind of dispensation we are in the gospel? Here is God manifested in the flesh. We'll, we'll be coming up in chapter 9 and chapter 10. And then Paul will be the church with the Gentiles. And said unto him, it is written. All right, this, this is written. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Place where you go and you pray. Place where you seek God. Isaiah 56, 7. 
This is where Anna was when Jesus was born. Eight days. Anna comes up. She's a widow woman. And people come to her and seek her to pray for her. But you have made it a den of thieves. And to say thieves is, verse 12 is, you're stealing from the people. They're not getting full bargains. That was against in the law. But the Pharisees and Sadducees are stressed. Oh, there were, did you wash your hands? Did you wash the plates? So, this happens in Matthew of the king Jewish. And the blind and lame came to him in the temple. And he healed them. So Matthew brings Jesus into the temple and clears the whole place out that welcomes the people with their infirmities. You made this a house of prayer. However, well, you would take that the blind and lame would have been ones praying to God. And he heals them. And when the chief priest who are running the temple and the scribes in charge of the word of God saw the wonderful things that he did and, and it's not wonderful like <laughs> it's great hallelujah glory to God the great controversy he just caused now with the other gospels you read that here's the tables being knocked over here's the coins running around rolling around on the floor here are animals going here and there and everywhere the doves are flying all around there's animal poop everywhere there have been people knocked on their rear ends knocked on their knees he is swinging this, this, this cord of rope he did and the children crying in the temple there is this big ruckus saying, Hosanna to the son of David. And they were sore displeased. That's the chief priest of Christ. So you would have the baptism. Well, isn't it great? We got children running around. They're causing all kinds of ruckus. And all that. Yeah, but the children in the Bible were causing a ruckus in the temple, praising and honoring God, not raising a ruckus. Some of these children in the Baptist churches that raise a ruckus, and I got one particular church way back when, where things would get broken. Is that how God wants you to have your children be misbehaving, breaking things? In the public? I tell you, my family up north would not let me act like that. We had to show respect to people's goods. We had to show respect to people's items. Down south, I've seen children. Oh, it's great to see all the children running around and all that. Oh, okay. When they grow up and they're in trouble with the law and stuff like that, you know, they're not. Don't come crying. I know the church up north. Yeah, how wonderful, you know, kids and all that. And then when he had his grandchildren, oh, how wonderful the kids be running around. Oh, you mean the great stain? I got yelled at for accidentally stepping in chewing gum and bringing it into the church. Now it's okay for your grandchild. To spill grape juice. Okay. Okay. Show me a verse in the Bible that says you can just let the kids run free. I'll give you tons of scripture in the book of Proverbs that they're supposed to be properly behaved. Children crying in the temple. And what they're crying and saying, it, it, it's vocal, it's Hosanna. Save us now to the son of David. No, that showed up again. They keep saying over and over, the son of David, the son of David, the son of David, since the blind men. And the chief priests and the scribes are like, so you're supposed to be worshiping us. Because Pilate will tell you, we'll read later, Pilate said, I know why you brought this man to me, because you envied him. He gets all the worship, he gets the crowd. Well, these Baptist preachers, they're not upset with these mega churches because they got false doctrine, because they got false doctrine themselves. What they're upset up is they got more people than we do. How can we be like them and get a whole bunch of people showing up? And they were so displeased. 
They're raising a ruckus. They're calling out to God, the Messiah, to Jesus, glorifying him, but, you know, selling the doves and, and cheating the people. That, that was no. Because they had part in it, chief priests and scribes. They would get their little money. They were in on the scam. And said unto him, Here is thou what thee say, Hosea, son of David. Calm him down. We don't want them praising God. Remember the two blind men? Have mercy, us, O son of David. Oh, shut up. You're going to make him stop. Shut up. Be quiet. Don't say nothing. Oh, have mercy, us, O son of David. And Jesus stopped. <laughs> like, oh, brother, you did it now. That's the same thing here. Jesus is not permitting the children to misbehave. He, well, that's what he said. Yay. I hear him. Have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings? Thou hast perfected praise. And that comes from Psalms 8 2. They're not misbehaving. Don't misquote the scripture. They're not misbehaving. They're crying out. They're shouting out to God, the Messiah. They're not knocking things over. He did that already. They're giving praise to God, who is Jesus, unless you're a Jehovah Witness. And the religious folks can't stand it. Can you imagine any of past, present, or future popes when all the true Christians, and some that are Catholic, Catholic can be saved, are given honor and glory to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine what the popes would be like? We're burning in hell down here. Yeah, yeah, you deserved it. I wonder if in hell, in the lake of fire, after, I wonder if they will hear us praising Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit. That would, that would be torture. We could be up there singing. We could be up there praising God. We could be up there before the throne of God. But you preacher told me say a prayer and I could be saved. You Pope told me if I followed the traditions and the listenings of you in the church, I would be saved. And you, the, the Jehovah Witnesses, you proclaim that Jesus wasn't God. And you, the Mormons, where's our planet? And Dalai Lama and Russia and government and the Democrats and Republicans. We're not there worshiping Jesus. That's got to be a torture. I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't know if they do hear us praising God. But I know one thing what the scriptures just said. The religious folks hate it. You know who gave me, I had six years of, of public ministry, street preaching. You know who gave me the most hardest time? It wasn't the unsaved people. In fact, a lot of the unsaved people come up to me and say, yes, I don't believe what you're saying, but hey, i got to hand it to you, man. You're here every week. Every week you're here. It's the ones that proclaim to be Christians. And you're driving people away. Isn't that what my preacher would do? I let my light shine. I don't like you worshiping Jesus. I don't like you publicly saying Jesus. I like you just go over there, shut up, and light your candle, and, and have your salt with your, with your corner on the cloud and leave us alone. I was telling my daughter, I, said, I think there's two churches. We've had, our car is full of nothing but scripture. 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 All the way around the car. Scripture. I know for one thing, for, truly for sure, we had one pastor of a church that hated the car. Maybe another. I can't prove the second. What? Oh, yeah, that's right. You were a King James Bible believing church, but you, you would change the scriptures in your pulpit. He left them. What is that? He quotes the scriptures. Have you not read? That's like the second or third time he's told them that. Imagine Jesus telling the scribes they're supposed to be in charge of scripture. Have you not read? God can't speak to you with a closed Bible. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling, thou has perfected praise. He quotes Psalms and he left them. Right? 
That's kind of rude of Jesus, isn't he? What would Jesus do? Just say it to the Lord. Bye. Come on, boys. He didn't give them a chance. He left them with their mouths open. Some of them down there trying to pick up their coins. Some of them trying to catch the doves. <coughs> and went out of the city into Bethany. Now we learned in verse 1, Beth page was a house of figs. Beth, B-E-T-H, is a house. This one is the house of date. House of figs. And we're going to read about a fig tree. It's going to be withered. House of dates. I'm going to take the word as dates. We're coming to the time where Jesus' time is at hand. And he lodged there. Now in the morning, he wakes up, as returned unto the city, Jerusalem. I mean, there was a time that I think it was Jesus. Yeah, it was Jesus. He, he left he, he, in the city. They, they wanted to kill him. They go out of the city. And he goes, let's go back. And he's like, you know, well, Jesus, they wanted to kill you. Well, we're going back. And um, Thomas like, okay, let's go and die. <laughs> we're going back. He's going he's gonna to die. <laughs> Jesus enters back and he ain't afraid. You can't kill nobody until God says you can kill them. And God's in control. Save the rock. Now, if you got a set date by God of your death, there's only one way you can change that is by smoking, drinking, and other sins. You can shorten your life expectancy. But, if God has a set date for you, you can do what you do, not foolishly, but you can live your Christian life. And if God's going to protect you, it's not your time. Religion ain't going to kill you. And you say, well, what about all the things with the churches and Christians being burnt at the stake, being torn? That was their time to go. And he saw a fig tree in the way. He came to it. And found in nothing there but the leaves only. Now, it is not the time of the figs. I mean, excuse me. Yeah, figs. The tree was not mature enough. In Mark eleven thirteen, the season's not right. So, yes, he will not find any fruit. And said unto it, let no fruit grow they go on the henceforth forever. And the question is, well, why did Jesus curse that tree? He ought to know there would have been no fig, and it wasn't the time. That fig tree pictures the nation of Israel. It pictures self-righteous. He comes up to this tree as a nation of Israel and says, I want fruit. Wherefore, by their fruit, you should know them. And he that the Father has planted and he has no fruit. They'll be uprooted and cast into the furnace of fire to be burned. He comes up. He says, as far as the nation of Israel, I expect fruit from you. And all you got is leaves to show. That's what's going on. The high priest, the chief priest, the scribes, the Pharisees, and the, and, and the Sadducees, they're not producing any fruit. Let no fruit grow from thence for forever. And presently the tree withered away. Now other gospels will say on the next day when they came back, they found that the tree had died. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? It doesn't say it withered away when the disciples were standing there. When you go scripture with scripture and you rightly divide, he walks up to the thing, he sees leaves, he, he curses the, the, the fig tree, they go away. While they go away, that tree dies. 
and they have to come back the next day, there's that tree and it's withered up. That fig tree, from the time of Adam and Eve, they took fig leaves and they sold them together and made self-righteousness. Israel, in the time of Jesus, are self-righteous. We don't need the Messiah. You got us. You don't need the law. Wash your hands. When Jesus said, take you my yoke, my burden is light, it's easy. He's talking about all the extra traditions and all the laws that man has put on the nation. He said, come on to me. I'll take care of you. Don't worry about washing hands. Don't worry about how many steps you got to make on the Sabbath. Don't worry if you're rubbing your hands and get some weed. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is this fig tree withered away? It's the next day. <laughs> Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto you, If you had faith and doubt not, and we all, do, we all doubt, we don't have that faith. Because watch, you so faithful, you shall not only do this, which is done to the, to the fig tree. There it is, it's withered. Let's see you do that. Walk up to any tree and say, I cursed you, old tree. And I'll give you a month to come back to that tree and see how it's with. You got great faith? All right, curse that tree. Let's see how great your faith is. I don't have great faith. I'm a doubting Thomas. There are things in my life I say, Lord, today, I, I, I've got something going on. I was like, Lord, <laughs> uh, should I ask for a sign? And I look up the word sign in Pauline epistles, because it's the church age epistles, and it's like, it's all Jewish. Don't do it. We're going to live by faith. Faith is hard. When you got to take that step and God says, just take the step. There's nothing there. Take the step. You must read Pilgrim's Progress. When he's going through the, the, the valley of the shadow of death, he don't see what happens until he gets through the, to the valley at the end. Listen, I have made so many errors and wrong moves in my life. I got a thing right now with my daughter and I. It's like, Lord, is this what you want me to do? I can't go by feeling. I can't go by... I got to go by God. And God's like, you got to trust me. But what if I make the wrong move again? So let's just try a tree. Now, I tell you what. We won't do tree. Go out and find a pretty flower in your yard and curse that pretty flower in the morning. Let's see that flower weather it up. We'll do a flower. You don't have to do a tree. How much faith you got? I tell you what, these, these preachers that run to Malachi, oh, you got to they're the ones that don't have faith. They're the ones that look at the checkbook, oh, I've got to make them give money because we're in trouble. <laughs> or maybe in trouble. Come on. I see through it. But also if you say unto this mountain, which be the Mount of Olives, are you really got faith? Be thou removed. Okay, walk up to the mountain. Say, mountain, go. Bye. <laughs> be thou cast into the sea. That would be the either the Mediterranean Sea or the Dead Sea or the Sea of Galilee, it shall be done. I don't have that much faith. Right, maybe you do. I don't. But I haven't seen any mountains die. I haven't seen any mountains move. And all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, Believing, ye shall receive. Now let me ask you a question. Now we're going to run to this thing. Have you ever prayed for anything that God has not given you? 
then verse 21, 22, Jesus Christ is a liar. Unless, study so shall I see if approved on the God a worker that needs needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Unless Matthew 21, 22 is not written to the church, it's written to disciples. How's that one? Because if we check the scriptures, and we'll check the scriptures, all right, the tree withered away, verse 20. When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is this tree withered away? And he answered and said unto them, the disciples, verse 20, Very I say unto you, the disciples, verse 20, If ye, disciples, verse 20, have faith, doubt not, ye, disciples, verse 20, shall not only do this, which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye, the disciples, verse 20, shall say to this mountain, Mount of Olives, Be thou moved, be thou cast in the sea, it shall be done, and all things whatsoever ye ask, disciples, verse 20, shall ask in prayer, believe it, ye, disciples, verse 20, shall receive. Because these very same disciples, minus Judas, are going to go out and play out the book of Acts. There's a possibility of asking you to receive it may not be to the church. It may not be to you, Mr. Mr. Christian. Mrs. Christian. Matter of fact, there are probably times you ask God for things and you look back and you're like, thank you, Lord, for not answering that prayer. Not getting it. You see, the problem is when we take a verse of scripture, we put it on a wall hanging and we claim it and name it and it may not be written to you. There is no church, there is no death, there is no burial, and there's no uh, uh, resurrection in Matthew 21. He just got finished going in and out of Jerusalem to the temple. I know a lot of Baptists think their, their church is the temple. It's not. The temple was destroyed in 70 A.D. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with Paul says, your body is the temple. All right, so how many people go entering inside your body? I don't even want to ask where the door is. you got to rightly divide. Because the next verse we're not going to do tonight, but when he was come into the temple. That's not a church building. I know. The Baptists run to Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. Everything they got to teach, you eventually, listen, they're going to run to Matthew. Like there's no Mark, there's no Luke. They'll run to John. Mark. Well, Matthew shows us the genealogy of a Jewish king, not Gentile, not Christian. He's not our king, he's our husband. Mark will show Jesus Christ as a servant. That's an ill-freighted word today. You can't use it because it's a nasty word. As the world or as America celebrates MLK today. Which was not his name, Martin. He was renamed when they went over to Europe and went over to Martin Luther's residence. Then he named him Martin. His name was Michael. Let's get it right. Even my phone got it wrong. Luke shows the humanity of Jesus Christ. John will show the godliness of Jesus Christ. Matthew's not written to you. Matthew's written to Jews. You say, what about Mark? Mark has the, they run to Matthew, the great commission of Matthew. Mark has a better commission, which is wiped out out of modern Bible. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Many of your modern Bibles don't have that verse. Because it's easier to teach, not preach. Anybody can sit up a Sunday school class. I've sat under a few Sunday school Bible classes where the, the, the teacher was an idiot. I mean with a capital I-D-I-O-T. Right to the divide. Verse 20 says, disciples. Disciples, 21. Disciples 22. Now, does God answer your prayer? Yes. But 
in the church age. That, what about Paul? All, right, all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believe it, ye shall receive. Did Paul believe God? This just came to my thought. Did he believe God? Yes, he did. Did he love Jesus? Yes, he did. What happened when he said, God, I got this thorn in my flesh? God says, I'm leaving it there. Well, then Matthew 21, 22, I'm not disregarding Jesus, but Jesus must be a liar. Because Paul asked three times, and three times God says no. Now, ask me a question. The disciples who became apostles, Paul was never a disciple, he was an apostle. Uh, show me one place in the life of the disciples, apostles. You know, the disciples became apostles. Show me where they asked God something and God said, no. That's what he's talking about. I mean, that's like, well, we know it's not Jesus' birthday. Oh, here he goes again. But, well, if you know, plain and simple. 